Hello, everyone. Stephen here. Thank you again for joining me for another episode of What's Right for Your Tank Chat. As I work to put this series together, I've truly learned the amount of time and effort that content creators put in behind scenes. I would typically take two to three hours putting together footage and image, edit, do researches to make sure I'm providing the right information, and then another two to three hours to write, edit, post. And then broadcast contents. At this time, I'm not, and possibly never will, <laughs> receive any monetary reward for this effort. But my passion is to share this wonderful hobby and help everyone who is interested to become informed and, in turn, help everyone keep their beloved livestock living longer, healthier. That alone is rewarding enough for me. Therefore, I'd like to simply ask for your support to like and share this video. And subscribe to the channel to help support the cause. Thank you so much. Now, without further ado, let's jump into today's topic: Are nasal tang right for your tank?、Uh, just a little bit disclaimer:、um, I actually don't have a whole lot of、um, background information in the entire genus nasal tang, and I doubt that most people, I doubt that anybody in this hobby would, just because. This hobby only contains so little bit of what the entire nasal tang genus can offer, and most of us、um, either have our exposure to them in in person by keeping them, seeing them in stores, or went out and diving with them. But there are so many of them because they're open water swimmers. So, so many of them that we either can't identify readily, or we just simply don't come in contact with them. So I'm just gonna pick and choose the ones that we actually most commonly see in the hobby, and also, you know, I only share what I have had experience with. So please just know that、um, I'm not trying to put together like a scientific journal. This is just purely for the hobbyists and based on my experience. Then again, as I put together this tank series, I noticed that you know there's a lot of tank police out there. Please forgive me if you feel that I'm not giving the proper information on whether or not a tank should reside in certain size gallon tank. You know, everybody ha- is entitled to their opinion. Some people's success is not necessarily others, and also just because you can doesn't necessarily mean it's ethical. That's a whole other topic, and I really don't want to get into that.、Uh, things will get too muddy and too 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 crappy to deal with. Now, nasal, also known as unicorn tang, belong to the Acanthuridae family, commonly known as the surgeon fish or tangs. These fish are known for carrying the razor-sharp blade near their tails. Not only the nasal tangs share that same signature feature, but their spines are among the largest and longest in the family, and most of them do not even retract their Acanthuridae,、um, like like their Acanthuridae cousins. Um, there are currently 17, possibly more, known species that are identified under the, the genus Nasal. But you know, like I said, there there's such a vast ocean out there that who knows how many more species of of Nasal that there may be. But the Nasal family contains some of the largest of all surgeon fishes. Some of them can reach well over two feet in length. And that's not counting the unicorn part of their head. And not all nasal tangs have the unicorn. The popular aquarium species, nasal nasal literatus, or just simply nasal tang, typically do not develop the unicorn. At least not in captivity.、Um, I've I've dove with them in the wild. I've never seen one with a unicorn. But if you have, you know, please leave a comment. Or if you can share a picture, that would even be greater. In my personal travels, I've snorkeled with unicorn tanks, nasal unicorns, and、um, their full body length is the entire size of my torso, just to give you an idea of how large they get. Because the size these fish can reach, compounded by the need for space, fresh oxygenated water, and difficulty in shipping, especially the adult fish. Only three species of these magnificent creatures are commonly found in aquarium trade. Now, if you're able to find any other species, you know, lucky you. But honestly, most of them are not suitable for the home aquarium just because of size.、Uh, 
Um, the ones that we see most are the nasal literatus, that's the black back nasal thing, and nasal elegance, that's aka the blunt nasal. They look just like literatus, except they wear a yellow cap. And then there's the nasal flamingi, uh, the flamingi thing, which is isn't even that commonly um, available in the fish hobby anyways. Um, they can actually eventually get almost two feet. So, are nasal tanks right for you? Well, if you haven't picked up on my emphasis on tank size by now, let me just um, place your focus again on space, space, and more space. Even the smaller nasal tank, the Doratus, can reach well over a foot in body length. So ideally, you want a tank with and I, I mean minimum, this is just minimum, a foot plus of unobstructed swimming lane, which means if you have rocks and all, all that in your tank, you might need like a 10 foot tank or 12 foot tank, which most people you know, don't have the space for. And then you also want to have at least four feet of width to allow the fish to turn without bumping into things. Uh, also, with that size of tank, you also want to provide enough water flow to generate the oxygen-rich water. Tanks the size of this size usually um, goes well beyond 300 gallons. And I know that many argue that they've had success keeping them in tighter tanks. I personally have one in my 180, and I will not disagree that it's also possible. However, my personal plan is to upgrade to at least a 8 if not 10 feet by 4 feet tank um, you know 300 to 500 gallon in the near future I, I do have the resources for it and space for it I just haven't had the time to really do the research and figure out the plumbing and all the planning so you know like I have that in the plan um, not everybody has the resource and space for it so just I, I would just caution that you know think twice before you get one of these because um, they do get big Outside of the space requirement though, nasal tanks are some of the easiest and most docile fish you can ever find in the hobby. Docile not just by tank standard, but docile by all fish standard. Despite being the largest among all tanks, nasal tanks are actually gentle giants, and they tend to play peacekeepers in my tank. They eat like a pig almost without a fail, and due to its size, it's actually very rare that any tank mates could bother trying to intimidate them. There's very little compatibility issue between nasal tank and most of the other commonly found species, although you just have to be careful if you get them at a smaller size, then obviously you want to look out for any kind of aggression, predation from other tank mates, but you know, once they're adult size, they're really, there's nothing stopping them. In conclusion, as long as you have the adequate space, to dedicate to these marine beauties, you will be nicely rewarded with a beautiful fish that is both gentle and full of charm. I hope you enjoyed today's video and again please like, share and subscribe. I look forward to hear from you.